Welcome everybody, VMworld 2012 Tech Talks. Our next Tech Talk is with Brian Knudsen. Brian, what are you going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about using Fusion IO in a VMware View deployment. All right, well I'm sure we'll have a lot of interest on that one. Brian, thanks again for, for joining yeah. us and I'm looking forward to your talk, buddy. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. So, the evolution of this, um, I've got a customer, I work for a VAR, have a customer that wanted to do VMware View. I've been looking at the Fusion IO cards, trying to figure out how best to use them, so I figured that particular customer was going to be the perfect opportunity to do that. And so what I'm going to go over here is, is a quick high level of the architecture that we deployed there for their POC and some of the test cases we went through to, to kind of figure out how well it was working. So without further ado, uh, this, is, this is a view of the architecture um, that we, we implemented there. Pretty simple. Um, at the base, they had a three-part system already in place um, that they were using for all of the rest of their environment. So that was kind of our baseline is how well does it perform on the three par? And then that was our comparison level. Above that, there were a couple of DL380 Gen 8 servers, so the latest HP servers. Um, the configuration on those were um, 128 gig of RAM, or no, 256 gig of RAM on those. Um, dual eight core processors, kind of the latest, greatest, kind of the best you can get um, type configuration there. And then um, in each one of those, we had a Fusion IO Gen 2 card. Um, in, in this case, it was the 400 gig model. Um, those were just demo units. So the long-term plan would be go with the 700 gig models um, to, to be able to fully handle the, the load that we were planning on putting on, on these particular hosts. Um, oh, I guess um, to finish the slide off, then above that, we've got the VMware View connection server and View Composer installed directly on the vCenter server, both of which were running as VMs in a separate cluster. So in their normal server infrastructure, we had those running. So they didn't influence the performance of this infrastructure whatsoever. So the first test that we, came that we ran was the iometer test. Um, you can see it's a very basic uh, test case from this. Uh, half and half read-write. Um, all sequential, so no random writes or reads in there. Um, each of the desktops we deployed were a single CPU Windows XP machine uh, running an x86 and with three gigs of RAM. So what we did is we had two VMs running at the same time on two different hosts, and we would run iometer on both of those. First on the SAN, where we got an average IOP of about 2,500, almost 2,600. Um, IOPS going across there on average. Uh, we also saw an IO response of you know just over a third of a of a millisecond. Um, the peak was somewhere around the 10 millisecond range, I believe. Um, so pretty good performance coming from that three par as it was. Um, their three par is is well sized out. They'd recently done a done an expansion on it, so they had a lot of extra disks in there um, to give them some really really good IOPS. Um, the, the Fusion I.O. test that we then did um, got us up over 11,000 IOPS. So again, this is two different Fusion. In this case, we had two different Fusion I.O. cards, but this particular test was only running against, was only hitting a single Fusion I.O. card. So we were getting over 10,000 IOPS from that one card. Um, we did see an average response of, of well under a millisecond. Um, it, it came in actually less than tenth of a millisecond. And that is really one of the, the go-to strategies that Fusion IO has is the fact that they don't have the latency that is introduced even in a fiber channel network. So another huge advantage for really very uh, speed sensitive um, IO operations. Um, an anecdotal thing that we kind of picked up and all of these tests are gonna be um, stopwatch type tests rather than actual um, hard data. Um, the, outside of what we have for iometer here, um, is that it took actually the sand test actually three seconds to get started. So we'd click start, and it was three seconds before data started actually coming in. Whereas the Fusion IO test actually was instantaneously, it was already um, picking up steam and, and going after the test. So it seemed like the test itself actually started faster on the Fusion IO than it did on the sand. Um, the second test we ran was just to test user login experience, uh, which of course is, is really the key metric when it comes to um, most desktops. Um, I've done a lot of view deployments and it seems like 
the application load time is important, but if the user can't log in very quickly, it's even that, that's an even more important metric that, that customers are looking for. Um, on the SAN, all based on profile unity, um, it took 40 seconds for the user to, from the time they clicked connect to the point at which they had a workable desktop, again with a stopwatch, about 40 seconds. Fusion I.O. took about 24 seconds. So as the user's logging in, all that data is coming down off the network, loading inside of that XP machine. It takes a lot of IOPS to do that. And that's where you get a lot of problems with login storms, um, which, which can really kill a, a, a view deployment if you don't properly configure the storage layer. The third and final test we did was to just shotgun the whole environment. So we created a desktop pool, um, again, based on that same XP image, one CPU, three gig of RAM, and said, hey, let's create 400 desktops, let's get all 400 powered on and running, and just go. Uh, we went into, uh, we configured Vue to be able to handle the extra deployments, we configured vCenter to handle all those extra deployments, so it was able to really, truly push it as hard as possible. Um, in the SAN, it took, on the three par array, it took about an hour for all of these desktops to get pushed out. Um, we did see, from a SAN perspective, that it hit 24,000 IOPS. So the SAN itself was seen at peak 24,000 IOPS being pushed through it. On the Fusion IO side of things, we cut the time in half. So the amount of IOPS that we got, which we didn't directly measure, was enough to be able to cut the actual deployment time in half. So again, going to show how important the, the, the data layer is to be able to push the IOPS in order to push things out as quickly as possible. Um, another anecdotal um, thing that we picked up on that is that it looked like the vCenter server itself was the um, limiting factor. Um, in that particular test, I think we were at a two CPU configuration. The CPU was bouncing around the 80 to 90% most of the time, uh, which was by far the highest statistic that we measured during that deployment. Um, so it seemed like if we made the vCenter bigger, we might actually be able to push even a little bit faster than that was. Um, from a, from a storage perspective, um, in, in other tests that we had run on their SAN, we were able to push it as high as 40,000 IOPS. Um, so we know that the SAN could handle more than that, so it didn't seem like that was, that was the barrier even in the SAN test. Um, but the number of IOPS available to it does definitely make a difference there. So that's pretty much all I had. Um, I kept it pretty, pretty short there. Um, so if anybody here has any questions, feel free to grab me afterwards. And anyone else, um, if you need to get a hold of me, um, I'm on Twitter at B. Knutson. Or, um, you know, my email address is out on my website, um, knut.net slash vblog. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Brian, we really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, seems like you're having a lot of fun with some VMware View. Yes, I do yeah. a lot of VMware View. Um, done videos and everything. Yeah. All right, and you have all that content on your blog? Yep, most of it should be out there. All right, great. I know I need to personally brush up a little bit on, on VMware View. I'm, I'm getting taxed with it a little bit more, so yep. uh, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, there's a lot right. to it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yep. All right, Absolutely. we're going to have a, a brief moment where we uh, transition for our next speaker. Uh, thanks again to Brian, and thanks for everybody for showing up. Um, for those of you who are on site, we do have the uh, V Brown Bag badges that you can get. Uh, we have some right over here. And I've got some uh, uh, various places uh, in the hang space. So uh, if you need one, grab one of the brown bag guys. We'll be happy to get one for you.